Hi, my name's DJ Clark. I'm a multimedia journalist and an educator based in Beijing. And today in the freezing cold, I have Jonah Kessel with me to talk about sequencing, probably one of the most important aspects of video journalism for photojournalists moving into video journalism. For people that don't already know Jonah, who's, in my opinion, one of the most interesting innovators in this space, could you just introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about where you come from and, and what you're doing right now. Sure. Uh, like you said, my name is Jonah Kessel. Um, I come from the U.S. Uh, and I am uh, primarily a video journalist now, or I usually go with the term visual journalist. Um, but I come from a still photography background. Um, after journalism school, after J school, I uh, worked at a number of small papers in the U.S. and some medium-sized metros uh, as a still photographer, taking daily assignments. And, and back then it was, it was quite different. You know, it was three assignments in a day. It was really kind of a... Uh, adhering to the daily grind of, of a newspaper man. Um, but however, in the past three years now, four years, I've transitioned out of photography, um, and now I shoot almost exclusively video. Um, I work for the New York Times here in China, uh, covering China and uh, parts of Asia. Um, however, I do a kind of variety of work. I work in the commercial atmosphere, the NGO and nonprofit atmosphere, as well as uh, for government organizations. So I do a, a large scope of video work uh, these days, based out of Beijing, but working throughout the world. Cool. Well, we're here today working with some of my students at the Beijing Foreign Studies University on sequencing. Something that, as I said in the introduction, I think is probably one of the most important parts of, or important new things to learn for a photojournalist moving into this space. Can you tell us a little bit about what sequencing is and why it's important? Right. Um, as you said, sequencing is tremendously important um, in creating cinematic journalism. And before you get too far into it, you should kind of back out and look at cinematic journalism as an art form, as an, an emerging art form, but also as um, a type of journalism that's still, still being created. If you're looking at sequencing, you should probably back out to cinematic journalism in general um, about why we do it, um, what the art form and the journalistic form has to offer. And I think it kind of has to do with making people care. Um, People simply don't follow the news as much as they used to. News consumption is and has been in decline for a long time. Um, and that's because I don't think the news industry, and specifically video journalism too, has uh, really adapted to the current visual environment. So when I make a video for whoever, the New York Times or a commercial client, the same people who watch it are also the same people that are going to watch Iron Man 2. They're going to watch Hollywood and Bollywood movies. They're going to have web browsers with 20 tabs open at the same time, and their phones and iPads will be beeping constantly. I know because I'm like that, and a lot of people are. It's just the world we live in. So trying to compete with that media, um, I've kind of subscribed to a different style of journalism, and sometimes it's labeled cinematic journalism. And in this art form, or in this journalistic form, um, we're sequencing images together in a, an approach that more resembles Hollywood, or at least movies. So looking at sequencing, what we're doing is combining images to create uh, the impression that something is happening fluidly, timelessly. Um, maybe a subject is going from far over there to way over there, but through sequencing, I can make that happen in two seconds, three seconds, just like you can in a movie. Um, and the whole goal is to create a more immersive experience, an experience where someone pushes play on one of my videos, and hopefully it ends before they even think about clicking off. Sure. And that's really the goal, is to make people care. Yeah. If we're making media that people don't watch, is it important, is it worth it? It's really um, something that I think about every day. And that brings in a really important question about engagement. So, Engagement is something that we're striving for online. Most photojournalists are working in the online space when they go into video rather than going to broadcast or into the film industry. And so they're having to deal with people, as you said, thinking about other things, maybe clicking around or, or just picking up things, very easily distracted. But how does that influence ethics? Because as photojournalists, we've been brought up with a really strict ethical code. And for video, and particularly trying to, to create these engaging experiences, we may be pushed to go try things a little bit differently. So where do you stand on the difference between photojournalistic ethics and working in video? Um, as a photojournalist, I definitely had a, a different ethical background. And I think the biggest difference is that my role, my role is much less uh, active. So as a photojournalist, my role was uh, very passive in that I wouldn't actually interact with people so much to the point that I would never want to change reality. I would never tell a subject to, hey, move your hand over there. Um, it was very passive in that way. I would talk to people and make them feel comfortable. You don't want to 
just be a guy with a camera there. But as a video journalist um, and cinematographer, your role is much greater, um, especially in the online, especially in the newspaper world. You're actually acting as multiple people. You're a producer, you're a cinematographer or a DP, you're a director. So in order to create better video, you actually have to take a, a kind of a greater role. The line of ethics is where I feel like I'm changing reality. If I'm changing reality to something that's untrue, then I've crossed the line. However, if I'm working with somebody, talking with them, and uh, helping me to create sequences and images which I feel like are actually accur accurately representing the situation or the person's story, um, then I don't feel like I've breached any line at all. The, the big question is um, what's okay and what's not? How much, role, how much room do I have to make somebody do something? Um, and I don't think there's clear-cut answers. I do know that TV journalists, I work for TV sometimes, but my friends in TV seem to be able to take much greater liberties than as a newspaper person. So I feel like the online video world subscribes more to a newspaper ethical background than to a TV. That being said, if you don't take control of your scenes, you're not going to get good video. I feel like you really have to kind of, it depends on what you're talking about. I guess for a longer form documentary, there's room to really stand back and watch what happens. In the context of a journalist being sent someplace to document an event very quickly, uh, that can also be if the event's actually happening. Sure. But there's a million examples of things that we have to do all the time. For example, a profile of a person. This is an assignment I get very often where I'll say, someone will say, hey, we find this guy very interesting. Can you do uh, a video profile of him? We're looking for a three or four minute piece. And then I'll say, okay, what does he do? And they're like, he's a writer. And you're <laughs> like, okay, great. So we have a guy at a desk. That's not a very interesting movie. So I'm going to have to be, play a more active role into making this interesting. I'm going to probably do a pre-interview and I'll say, hey, tell me, about, you know, tell me about your writing. What do you write about? Where do you find inspiration? Where do you eat? Where do you sleep? You know? And look at all these parts of someone's life and try to piece together uh, a sequence of images which will combine to make a movie. However, I am going to have to make an active role to say, hey, uh, what time are you going to the restaurant? Or can you go to this restaurant now? When do you get tea? Um, or when you get tea, can you call me? Something like that. Um, and so while the ethics are different, I think at the end of the day, they, they, if you're misrepresenting reality, you're crossing the line. Sure. If you're being honest to your subjects and to your audience, you're okay. And finally, Jonah, we're freezing cold here. It's out in Beijing in the winter. Um, if you had one tip that you were going to give to a photojournalist moving into video about sequencing, what would that be? Um, I think as a photojournalist, the first thing you're going to notice when you move into video is just how much gear is involved. And it can be very, if not overwhelming, confusing. Um, and you have all these other tools. And when you start talking about sequencing, and you start, if you look towards movies, for example, you're going to see a lot of complicated stuff. So my biggest advice would be to not move the camera. Get a tripod, put the camera on the tripod, and don't move it. Make your shots last a long time, at least 10 seconds. And don't move the camera. All the fancy movement, dollies, jibs, motion, uh, any of that, it's not necessary. You can make beautiful films without moving the camera much. So I guess the biggest thing, don't get overwhelmed by the equipment, focus on the images. Yeah, yeah and that is exactly what I, I say to my students, keep things really simple. Thank you so much, it's freezing cold here in Beijing, we're in the winter standing outside. Um, that's the end of this session. Jonah Kessel, thank you very much. Thank you, DJ.